Hey, this is Chris Gore. You're listening to Dr. Gonzo Radio. I'm Dr. Gonzo Piqua something.com. I don't know. What am I supposed to say? Yeah, we'll have Zach. I'll uh, have Zach do the next bumper. <laughs> so, hey, Dr. Gonzo's here. Put a, put a dime in him, you gotta let the whole song play out. He's like human jukebox. Oh, he's a talker, ain't he? He's an old fat crap on man. And this is Dr. Gonzo. Um, just did a live recording with Brett R. Smith, and I'm going to give, uh, I'm going to add on a little bit. So I'm going to give Brett another proper introduction. I appreciate my friendship with Brett. He, of course, uh, we're both from Phoenix, Arizona, so <laughs> we like to chat a lot. Brett R. Smith is a professional commercial artist working in the graphic novel industry as an editor production manager, and creative director, a color artist in the comic book industry. Hey, folks, check out his work on Killer Frost. It is killer. It's great stuff. A storyboard artist in the advertising industry and a graphic artist for multiple clients, including uh, Eric July of Isom. Um, he, holds, he holds a BFA in animation. Smith started in the commercial art field in 1995 as an in-house color artist for Chaos Comics. Since then, he has worked with a wide array of clients, including Marvel, DC Comics, Hasbro, Cartoon Network, uh, McCann Erickson, BBDO, and Sachi. And Sachi. Uh, Smith has contributed to multiple premiere properties and licenses, including the Avengers, Batman, Superman, G.I. Joe, Wolverine, Suicide Squad, Guardians of the Galaxy, Hulk, Justice League, Heineken, Chase Bank, and a whole lot of stuff. He was also the co-adapter, uh, editor, and creative director for the New York Times number one bestseller, Clinton Cash. So uh, check uh, Brett out on Twitter, of course. Hey, and if you notice, uh, and I'm going to post a picture of it, there's my Wolverine uh, bucket. Uh, I would encourage you folks to really go to the movies with your kids. I've been watching movies with my kids, all four of them, since they were very little. And they're all in their 30s now. My son took me to go see Deadpool and Wolverine. I'm going to have a little mini review on it. There's my popcorn bucket. Uh, it was from Cinemark. So it, I didn't like the one with the huge mouth. And that's at AMC anyway. So I have that. And of course, if you see the spinning ball right here, we have the original Yondu rotating on the spinning ball. So, uh, of course, uh, have my stuff up for uh, Gary at Nerdrotic and Film Threat. Uh, I don't monetize, so I, again, I suggest that you, I suggest that you listen to both those fine gentlemen. Um, if you if you're looking for people to watch. Um, watch Gary's Friday Night Tights. That's how I discovered um, Chris Gore was still around, which was great because I used to watch him in the 90s with my kids. And uh, make sure, include if you have children, include movie watching, talk about books, talk with your kids no matter what age they are. You only have so much time with them. And I got a couple grandkids now. So enjoy the movies with them and teach them about the movies. Um, real quickly about uh, Deadpool and Wolverine, there was a ton of cameos in it. It is, I kind of cringe because there were a lot of little kids out there. And there was a couple of words that I was going to ask Alan about. And uh, that's my oldest son. Yeah, he took me to the movies. Um, and it's like, it's usually like, Dad, you really don't know. Dad, you really don't want to know what that word means. But there's a lot of language in it, a lot of blood and gore. There is no nudity in it. Um, I love the way they portrayed Cassandra Nova in it. Okay, so here's how Cassandra Nova looks in the comics. Um, and she started off, I actually had the first comic where she was introduced in, and that is this one. 
So I am a, a big reader of X-Men and uh, comic books. We've been reading them since I was a kid. My son collects, which is great because uh, he collected the later issues of Bendis, Michael Bendis and Jonathan Hickman. So uh, because I was not familiar with a lot of the way, ways the Guardians were regrouped, Guardians of the Galaxy were regrouped and, and all that. But OK, back to Cassandra Nova. Here's the way she looked in the movie. Emma Corrin's hot. <laughs> She's beautiful. And she played this whole thing. She was totally ruthless in it. And still a great villain. If you want to see it, more of Emma Corrin, uh, she plays in Netflix's Lady Chatterley's Lover. It's not porn stuff. It's really, it's erotic. Um, but it's not porn stuff. But there is nudity. <laughs> There's a lot of nudity in it. So... Um, Brett and I talked a lot about apathy. Let, let me put something on the screen here. I have a very strong feeling that the opposite of love is not hate. It's apathy. It's not giving a damn. Um, a lot of YouTubers these days, and I'm not going to name names. I've stopped listening to because number one, uh, some of them get information from a sparrow or a little bird. I still, can you talk to me? Still can't get my toucan to talk to me. And uh, a lot of them have just turned into gossip and speculation. I, and it's okay to speculate because I'm going to speculate a little bit uh, about a couple things here. But watch who you want to watch. I actually uh, ha I, I am a member of Film Threat, uh, of course, Gary at Nerd uh, The meetup in Las Vegas was great. All the, all the folks uh, that are with Film Threat and Nerd Rotics are just just great men and women, just great people. So um, I suggest them and Project Egg Roll. I met Philip Chan at the meetup in Vegas. Great young man, really great uh, young man. And I'm a member of Project Egg Roll, uh, Asian representation. So I would suggest you become a member there. And of course, become a member of Film Threat and Nerd Rotic to, to get special stuff. Okay, so... Um, Deadpool and Wolverine, ultraviolet, uh, I would see it again. As far as uh, Deadpool, the, people have been complaining he's not gay enough. Um, Deadpool wasn't gay. I, I read the comics, too. So he wasn't gay. And I heard somebody tell say he was pansexual. And I, I don't go for the more than two gender things. If you do, that's cool. Uh, you know, whatever you want. I have no argument or hate or adversity towards you. But if pansexual means however it pans out, that would be Deadpool. He is flirty with guys and girls. And I've only seen him in heterosexual relationships. The first, first superhero that came out as gay was North Star from Alpha Flight. And Brett and I did a uh, video on that before. So. Um, there's a lot of great movies out. You just got to kind of hand pick them. Uh, Twisters was great. And of course, um, there's a lot going on because of San Diego Comic-Con. And check out Film Thread or Nerd Rotics, uh for some of the videos of that. Fantastic Four, I am not so... Hey, Vanessa Kirby's hot. She's beautiful. I think all the casting for that is really good, except for Pedro Pascal. Uh, he should either lose the mustache or grow a beard. And he has grown a beard before. So I don't like the voice he uses. He uses the same vo voice that he used as Max Lord and Wonder Woman in 1984. And we know how that turned out. So just don't see Pedro as Mr. Fantastic. But Galactus looks great. And for sure, I will go and see the movie. So, um, Let's get back to the big reveal on Hall H. Let me bring up a picture for you. I'm just going to give you a little bit of what I think, where they, where, where they will go with Dr. Doom. Okay, so the big reveal was this. Okay, Robert Downey Jr. is Dr. Doom. Okay, there is one issue. Alan and I are looking for it in his collection. It's in a What If comic. Um, Dr. Doom and read uh, Dr. Doom and 
Tony Stark switch bodies. Maybe they're going to go that route with the variants. They Marvel has left too many things out in the open. Uh, number one, um, they they had Star uh, Star Fox and Pip, which should have been part of the Infinity War. They had them in the tail end of Eternals. Nothing about bringing them in. Uh, Shang Chi's post credit scenes. They have so many untied loose ends. Uh, Marvel movies alone may do okay. I'm going to go see Captain America Falcon and Thunderbolts, but I don't have, I have very low expectations for both of those movies. So again, if you go in with very low expectations, um, maybe, uh, maybe it'll be okay for you. Okay. So Robert Downey Jr. is Dr. Doom. Do I think he can play it? Sure. How are they going to set it up? Let me find a comic. Now, it hasn't really been set up. They're going to include uh, Franklin Richards or Valeria in the Fantastic Four movie or tie that in before Secret Wars. They may do that. Now, they could go Secret Wars with uh, Robert Downey Jr. Uh, being uh, God Doom. Uh, there was also this comic which in one of the trailers was uh, buried next to uh, Dead, Deadpool when he was lying down there. Uh, again, Deadpool was a good movie. I'd go see it again. It was all over the place. Um, and there's a ton of reviews out there. But going forward, how, how will the Russo brothers take care of Kang? I hate the TVA. I hated the Loki miniseries. I just don't, I like Tom Hiddleston. I like Owen Wilson. I did not like um, the the TVA series um, at all, you know, but it's tied in. And the way they could go about it is since the void, uh, this is no spoilers, but where, where Wolverine and Deadpool get dumped is the void. And the void is like where they dump all the variants and different superheroes and one faction's fighting the other. So it, so it already is a type of battle world, which is really well set up, of course, in Secret Wars. This, this was one of my favorite runs of any comic. Um, it, it just, it, it was a great series. So will they do it that way? I, I bet they, I bet they might. I don't know. Again, I would be very wary of people who, say they have inside insider knowledge and stuff like that. I know people in the industry. Um, my Wolverine thing back there has a, a set of sunglasses in it that were um, uh, what uh, X-23s, one of her prop glasses. And I really like uh, the actress that plays X-23. She was also in The Acolyte. I thought she did a decent, I thought she was the only good thing uh, about, about the acolyte. Um, I'm not sure what direction Marvel is going, but I think it's a good move with the Russo brothers and Robert Downey Jr. Will it work out? Wait and see. I mean, we don't have any good movies or any good series. Uh, they, uh, Disney ruined Agatha Harkness. She's nothing like she is in the comic books. Um, Star Wars is super dead. Um, I was going to do a, a review on the Acolyte, but I decided not to because it was just so utterly awful. I mean, it was the worst thrown together piece of crap I've ever seen. That's my opinion. Now, I was just at a Comic-Con locally, and there were a lot of people that liked the Ac Acolyte. I don't understand why. But let's pivot just a second and let's play a couple of clips from the Acolyte. They had this little rat bastard in there and I didn't understand. So I made a little mini video about it. Here we go. Basil. <laughs> Hi there, just checking the doors. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how Leslie got the gig, but 
She's connected with Harvey Weinstein. She knows where all the bodies are buried. I'm sure she has leverage. I'm sure she could just go in and do this. Do it, 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 do it. Do it. She can't write. She can't direct, in my opinion. Her wife, the Skittles lady, I think that's what Snarky Jay calls her, Skittlehead or something like that. Uh, lady can't act. Sorry. Um, she can't act. And uh, Star Wars is potentially dead. I mean, it, it just is. So uh, <clears throat> Brett and I talked about Star Wars. And uh, let's pick up on our from the live feed of Brett talking about the very first uh, Star Wars movies that he saw. Those movies, but nothing, it, it, it's all kind of pale. It's sort of a pale impression of the original three, all of them, I, you know, even the prequels. So I just kind of look back on it now as, um, uh, you know, those three first three movies, that's my Star Wars. That's the original Star Wars. That's the good stuff. That's where you go if you want to, get nourishment, you know, um, and the rest of this stuff, even the prequels, which I think are okay. Um, and I know some people that worked on them and they're, they're beautiful films, obviously the production design and execution. Um, but these, this new stuff, um, and I would probably say the first two seasons of Mando, I think are just really good. I think that first season is just perfect. The second yeah, is yeah. near perfect. The third is, you know, um, it's got some problems, but that's the purest that I've seen. Some people would say Rogue One. I need to go back and watch that because when I saw that in the theater, I, love, I not, loved Rogue One. It just didn't engage me at the first time. I've probably got to watch it again. But you know, getting back to my original point, the first three movies, that's where the magic is. And George Lucas was a different guy back then and had different intentions and was young and hungry and had something to prove. And there's a lot to be said about that for an artist when you're under the gun and you've got studio execs breathing down your neck and you've got to show them something remarkable. And he, you know, he rose to the occasion. He also had a bunch of creatives who he uh, deftly hired and, and they were at, they rose to the occasion as well. But everything since then, I just, to me, it's just kind of like, it's, it's fan fiction. It's, it's a, you know, it's, it's a pale comparison and, it'll never be what it was. So it's just sort of, you got to kind of uh, manage your expectations these days and understand that what we had in the seventies and the eighties was really special. And fortunately we can always go back to those. I own the unaltered DVDs of the first three films, which I, I bought back in like 1997 because they were going out of print. So um, uh, you can still find those on eBay. So you can watch the movies, the first three movies as they were, originally released without all the special edition special effects and Han Solo. Oh, yeah. I kind of like you know. the additions a little bit. But, Some of them know. are hokey. Like, you know, the, the whole Stepping Han Solo Java. Java. Yeah. yeah. I, that, yeah. that just always bugs me. And, you know, altering, you know, the, the Greedo sequence. I, I just can't stand that stuff. I love the X wing. I love a lot of the, um, you know, space sequences that they dropped in to kind of help out the original. But outside of that, I think that that first film is a perfect film and, and I think that everybody just needs to understand that that magic, you're just never going to get that magic. You know, it's, and again, it's kind of like a party. It's like you throw a party and it goes perfectly. And then you're like, you know what? I'm going to throw another party next weekend. It never goes the way that, you know, the, the, the original. You, you can't one capture the magic. No, it's but just when lightning you have in a, a bottle. Man. Like, but when you have a person like Leslie Headland walking into the room, you kind of get. It, do 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 it. That chick was never going to succeed. It was never going to happen. Her her wife is just not a good actress. I have nothing against her relationship or any of that stuff, but she's she, just she a, can't write. She can't she, write. She can't direct. She's just not good at her job. They were smart when they went out and got Favreau. And, and I was really, really impressed when they did that because I said, hmm, you know, John, John can catch lightning in a bottle. You know, he's, he can do it. Some, you know, he either hits or he misses, you know, uh, I, I think John's really talented and obviously Filoni, but I think, I think, I think John's more talented than Filoni, frankly, but I think that he was able to capture some lightning in a bottle on that first Mando. And, you know, um, ever since then, I'd, I, I've just been kind of confused as to why they went to such a heavy hitter in the beginning. And then they start handing out 
you know, these other series to people who I just don't think are serious creatives, you know, um, it's just bizarre to me, you know, book of Boba Fett too. I mean, what the hell was that? I, I, I it's and just, you know weird. what? I went to, a, I went to a comic con locally here in Piqua where I met Jim uh, Wazorski, uh, which was very cool. He's in, he does a lot of the, like, almost like Robert Corman, mm -hmm. um, all the booby movies and, yeah. and stuff like that. But he did a great movie with return of the swamp thing with Heather Locklear. Yeah. And that was a really good comic adaptation. It was, that it was, was pretty correct to the comic. Yeah. The first swamp thing's really good too. Um, mm -hmm. the, those first two are really good. The second one, they had a little bit bigger budget and obviously they go out and hire Heather Locklear, who's a big star at the time. She was on dynasty. Um, but like, um, I, I always found those to be really cool because it, it was the closest thing to the comic. And I always really dug Swamp Thing. So um, I, I like those movies. They're fun, you know? Uh, and again, it's, it's you, you know, suspension of disbelief. Yes, you have to have that when you're watching Swamp Thing, one or two, for sure. And, and again, uh, just to reiterate, um, uh, Brett and I love Twisters. Uh, great movie. Great tips out of the hat to the original Twister movie. Um, Deadpool and Wolverine's a must see there. Uh, how much you think? I, I think they're going to hit a billion. What do you think, Brett? Uh, I think it, it will. Yeah. Close. Yeah, man. I, th I think it's, I think it's looking like that for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, they, I, they, 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 they I, I, when I was in the theater cause there was little kids in there, Brett, there were words that were said in this movie where I had to turn to my son, Alan and said, Alan, I don't know what that means. Can you tell me? Uh, uh, dad, I don't think you want to know what that means. And he's like, I don't feel comfortable talking about it. So I said, okay, Google yeah. it later. And I'm like, later. Yeah. Ee, not for little kids, you know, yeah. fortunately, if, if a lot of that stuff's going to go over their head, um, you know, as it did with me with stuff like that, when I was that age watching movies that I probably shouldn't have been watching a lot of that stuff, the, you know, whatever double entendres or whatever, um, it just goes straight over my head. I was more caught up in the action. So, so again, yeah, we want to, we want to caution you against apathy watching. Mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah. I mean, a lot of the YouTube channels out there, of course, film yeah. threat with Alan Ng and Chris Gore. I love Gary at nerd, nerd erotics, bounding into comics, uh, project egg roll, but f uh, a good way to find what YouTube channel guy you like or don't like is to watch Gary's Friday night tights because he has a whole bunch of different people. So you, that's how I found Chris Gore was still mm -hmm. around uh, through that. Um, and, and going to the movie with low expectations, I guess, because, um, and then you're, then you're thrilled and ha watch for movies where you can have a fun time. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, this, this is about like, what do you want to spend your time doing? Right. You want to spend your time watching a movie being miserable. You want to spend your time watching a movie and enjoying and feeling good. You know, I mean, I can't imagine apathy watching stuff cause I'd just be a miserable prick all day long. And, and uh, my son, uh, now it's cool. Uh, kudos to my son, Alan, uh, my granddaughter, Willow May, he takes her to the movies. Oh, nice. She has her own little flashlight you know, to kind of watch where her feet are and got to watch it because she'll shine it all around. But uh, he took her to Inside Out too. Cool. And and she loved it. And obviously a lot of other people loved it too. Mm -hmm. So I think these days it's going to be hit or miss. You just have to be discerning yeah. and uh, uh, do, do some homework on the movie. You know, of course, uh, check out Brett on Bounding Into Comics. Uh, Brett's working on. Uh, let's uh, uh, go over again uh, what you were uh, with Eric July. What are you working oh, on right now, Brett? Um, I'm coloring Blood Ruth, graphic novel, and then I'm also um, working on superhero fatigue for uh, Comics Matter with your boy Zach. Uh, he, it's on Indiegogo, superhero fatigue, Sergio Cariello, Chuck Dixon. So it's, it's a good looking book and it's funny. If you're looking for something that's light and a comedy and a satire um, and something that uh, kind of lampoons. Uh, superheroes and superhero movies. It's it's a really cool book. It's a lot of fun. And uh, Brett R. Smith, of course, uh, Clinton Cash. Yeah. Um, colored a lot of great books out there. I know it's a, a heated uh, debate about the uh, politics these days, but it's yeah. going to be what it's going to be, folks. You know, uh, political wise, 
and uh, go to, uh, I would encourage you to go to both uh, uh, Brett's Twitter and Brett, uh, do you know your Twitter? Uh, uh, it's, in, it's, it's right there. At Brett oh, Smith cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got to, I'll have to add that to mine because Brett has a lot of great information. Um, he also uh, will repost a lot of great indie comics because i've stopped reading regular comics man yeah because um you know they said deadpool isn't gay enough there's a lot of that stuff i'm not against gay people you and i have, have discussed this in a thing before right but deadpool wasn't the original gay he's not a gay superhero he's maybe flirty both ways loves women as it shows in the comics and, and on there but North Star of Alpha Flight was actually the first gay superhero. Yeah. And they had a big wedding issue with X-Men and stuff like that. I, I would encourage you to go back, read the older comics, watch some of the older movies. I just rewatched Fantastic Four 1 and 2. They were pretty good. Yeah, uh, Galactus looks cool in the new Fantastic Four movie. Yeah, uh, the, the picture of his face. Yeah. Um, I think it's good casting, except Pedro, I... <laughs> I'm glad he's working, <laughs> you know, but how he juggles that in the, the uh, Mandalorian movie, which I, I don't know. I don't know that I would go see a, a Mandalorian and Grogu movie at the, at the theater, you know? Yeah. Uh, I don't know uh, either, man. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see, we'll you know, see what, what, what it starts to look like when the previews you know, starts to come out. And but I'm, I'm and with you. What do you, uh, we're, hey, we're both watching Taylor Sheridan stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Tulsa King is free right now mm -hmm. um, on CBS. They just yeah. started airing that. That's yeah. season one. Season two is coming up in September. Yeah. Um, are they going to do any more Reacher, you know? Yeah, I know. I know they're working on season three because they want to get it out as quickly as possible, you know, because all of these streamers uh, are trying to crank out um, entertainment faster to avoid what they call churn, which is where you subscribe to Paramount Plus, you watch a bunch of stuff that you all, all have always wanted to watch, you watch both seasons of Reacher, and then you cancel your subscription. And then when the new season comes out, you re-up. And then you watch Reacher, and then you cancel your subscription. They call it churning. So they're trying to avoid that, and the only way to do that is to put out stuff faster. So as soon as season two wrapped, they went directly into season three on Reacher, and. Um, you know, hopefully we'll get something soon. And uh, it's the same with Tulsa King. You know, they want to faster turnarounds on this stuff because they know they got to keep people uh, captivated with new stuff. Okay. Uh, super Superhero fatigue or bad movie fatigue? What do you think? <laughs> bad movie fatigue, dude. Bad TV fatigue. I mean, it's all just, it, it's just, it's not on par. It's not, it's, it's not on the level. They have it that, you know, they don't have it dialed in. They need better creatives and, and yeah, they're out there. They, think about Colin they exist. Those creatives exist. They just need to hire them. What do you think about Colin Farrell and uh, the penguin? I just, dude, I, th I think Colin Farrell is like just an amazing actor. I haven't watched I it. Love him I have a hard him. time with anything that is Batman related that doesn't have Batman in it. That's my problem. I've always been that way. That was I was the same way with Gotham. I was the same way with Pennyworth. I was just like, I, I don't care. I, I want to. Wa I want something with Batman in it. It's got to be compelling to me. And the only way you do that is with the hero. So, um, but that's just me. You know, I didn't like Joker. But, Lots of people like Joker. I, I didn't care for it. I I'll go see part two just to see it. But yeah. um, I won't see I that in the theater. A lot of anxiety at the time. I might and that movie it. seriously, physically stressed me out. Yeah, yeah. I, I, but no, because, I because he was doing his job. You know, yeah. uh, Joaquin Phoenix was doing his job. Yeah. Um, speaking of Batman, the new cartoon series, have you ever seen a female penguin? Now they're going to do a female uh, Mrs. Freeze. All this it's, stuff. It's so too bad because it looks so good. They obviously hired a great studio. They're cranking out great animation. It looks, it looks really visually, um, you know, awesome. But when I saw that female penguin and like the song and dance routine and the 23 skidoo, I was just like, nah, I don't think so. I think I'll continue watching the uh, universal action channel on Pluto TV, which is showing, round the clock night rider 
A team, Miami Vice, Magnum PI all day long, 24 hours a day. I mean, it's For the greatest free. channel that anyone has ever created. Uh, and it's free. It's amazing. So I've been watching yeah. a lot of Miami Vice and I, I've been kind of um, shocked at how good that show was. Um, uh, especially the first three seasons when Michael Mann was the showrunner because it got handed off to Dick Wolf at some point in time in season four or five. But when Michael Mann was on that show and he was driving it, it's just, it's a phenomenal show. Um, you know, once they, once James Brown starts showing up with the UFOs and all that stuff, the show gets a little, eh. but um, that show, people forget how much that show changed, not only TV, but also movies, music, pop culture, uh, clothes. Uh, I mean, that show changed so much. And I don't think Michael Mann gets quite enough credit. It's created by another guy, but Michael Mann was, was really sort of the, 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 the big driving creative force behind that show. Why it was so And I'm going to be uploading some old time tunnel episodes. Remember mm. time tunnel? Yeah. Yeah. Um, totally. uh, just to have that, of course, on my channel, I have some, I don't monetize my channel. So Disney's kind of cool with me. I have uh, Dr. Sin, yeah. uh, the scarecrow, which was a great series. Yeah. People should check that out. It's really good. Yeah. And it's really good. And Leslie, Nielsen as the Swamp Fox, yeah, um, uh, based on the true history character of Francis Marion, and that was uh, uh, taken by Mel Gibson in The Patriot, right. and he kind of gleaned off of Francis mm -hmm. Marion yeah. and the actual historical story. So there's good stuff out there, folks. Oh, yeah. um, make up your own mind on what you want to watch. Of course, I endorse my good friend Brett R. Smith, who's very smooth. God, I'm going to play Smooth Criminal on the outro. No, I'm getting it. Dude, I'm sorry about that. Good song. Um, but, hey, check out Brett. Uh, Eric July does great comics. I can't say enough for Isom Comics. I own the issues. I love the, the material. And Brett also, like I said before, I'm being repetitive, but I want you to know that Brett on his Twitter channel has a lot of great new comic books from indie guys who do some really good work. Yeah. Um, yeah I try, I try and give a shout out to anybody in particular. You know, I know Graham Nolan's got doc Frankenstein. There's, there's a, you know, I try and retweet as many creators as I can who have active campaigns and um, just, just, you know, spread the word. So people know, cause that's, that's how you market these things these days. But yeah, there's a ton of great comics out there right now. Most of them are in the indie market and uh, you just got to go exploring on Kickstarter and Indiegogo and, and you'll find them. Is oh. did uh do you know if Razor Fist did he do a comic book? Yeah, he did one with George Alexopoulos, um, Ghost of the Badlands, I think it's called, and I think it was in black and white, and they're gonna do a colored version as well. But I think that's available. I think I think uh you can pick that up. That looked really cool because I had never seen George do that kind of artwork before, and it, it's I, the look was great. I don't yeah. I don't own the comic, but I plan on he's yeah. a fellow Arizonian as well. I oh, yeah, that's right. Tucson. Yeah, yeah, um, but I think Razor Fist so, wrote it, and, and George uh, George drew it. So yeah, looks good. Looks so hey, cool. everybody, you know, and I really encourage everybody through this season of uh, electing president and all this stuff. Learn to look past this stuff. Don't let it engulf you. Learn to love one another. Have a beer with each other, like uh, Ronald Reagan used to have with Tip O'Neill at the end of the day. You know, we don't have to. I mean. The Beatles said it best. All you need is love. You know, we need, to, I don't want to be preachy old hippie guy, but we need to start just loving one another, man. You know, well, and you and, can, you can do that with movies and music and things where we come together, where we congregate together. And, and that's where we find that we have all kinds of things in common. Maybe not so much the path for the country, but, um, you know, we, we all love the same things. Oh, yeah, because even with Deadpool and Wolverine, both sides of the aisle were digging it yeah. for different reasons, but that's yeah. okay, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, I don't care. I'm, as, as long as it does well, people love it and they have a good time, um, that's that's really all that matters. Okay, Brett, well, you stayed way late for me. I do appreciate you. Ah. Um, I, it's a privilege to be able to do stuff with you once in a while, dude. Oh, I yeah, it's always like good. Brother. I really, really do. And now it's time for the outro, so... I can Hail to the king, baby. What the hell are you two doing?
It's called rocking out. You wouldn't understand, Dad. You're not with it. I used to be with it, but then they changed what it was. Now what I'm with isn't it, and what's it seems weird and scary to me. It'll happen to you. And this is Dr. Gonzo for all you baby boomers. Hey, like and subscribe to the channel, and uh, we'll see you right around the corner. Hi, my favorite DJ, Dr. Gonzo, is on the air right now. Dr. Gonzo is live Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The doctor knows what you need. The true classic hit of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. So tune in to gonzoradiopequa.com 24-7. Buy the ticket and take the ride because that's just what the doctor ordered. Tune in worldwide on the internet of Spotify. And that was my little Star Trek uh, cha-cha-cha. And again, Brad, thank you for being on. We're going to end the stream right now. Uh, please like and, and subscribe. And uh, see, I'm Dr. Gonzo. Oh, you know the one thing I like that I didn't show? Uh, this is, I, I like Jennifer Garner because she can handle these puppies. She's good electric. Better than me. Yeah. She's, she's a badass. Yeah. No spoilers for Wolverine and Deadpool, but you know, hey, hey, uh, Brett, we're going to end the stream now. Thank you very much for being here. Thanks, uh, God bless, man. You and Lisa have a great uh, afternoon, man. You too. Thanks again. We'll do it again. And bye bye. Later. What manner of man are you that can summon up fire without flint or tinder? I am an enchanter. By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Greetings, Tim the Enchanter.